I'm gonna teach you a secret strategy for improving your jazz solos that no one has ever taught before. And it's currently revolutionizing the playing of hundreds of my students. Let's jump to it. It's important for you to understand that learning jazz licks, jazz solos, scales, and even jazz standards are not going to improve your jazz soloing. That is unless you have a sound practice strategy to back them up. And unfortunately, I've seen many musicians fail to do this and remain stagnant for years, even though they're practicing the right things. So before I reveal exactly what you need to do, you need to understand first that the machine that is going to drive all the results in your jazz playing is in fact your practice strategy. If the machine, the engine, that is allowing you to improve musically is broken or not working properly, you will definitely get poor results. But if it's working smoothly and efficiently, you are guaranteed to improve your jazz solos quickly. So this is the exact strategy that members of my inner circle are implementing and you can as well. This strategy is called bad jazz solos. In just a second, you'll get to hear what one of mine sound like. And of course, bad is an acronym and I'll explain exactly what each of those letters means. But first, you have to start with learning a jazz standard. So just for example, let's say we're learning the song softly as in a morning sunrise. And so the bare minimum to learn a jazz standard is of course to learn the melody and to learn the chords. And by the way, if you need help learning melodies of jazz standards by ear, check out my free guide called Learn Jazz Standards the Smart Way. I'll leave that down in the description below. But after you've learned the jazz standard, it's the bad jazz solo that you're gonna take over top of it that really makes the difference. So now what you need to do is record a bad jazz solo. Now an ideal recording environment for one of our bad jazz solos is that you're only going to do it in one take. We're not trying to play a perfect solo here. We're really just trying to get an honest assessment of our improvisation capabilities over top of this jazz standard. And the second thing to keep in mind is you want to play and improvise as if no one is looking, meaning you're not trying to impress anyone. You're not trying to impress yourself. You're just playing for the sake of documenting your progress. So for example, here's a jazz solo that I recorded for some B-roll footage for this exact video here. I wasn't really caring about what anyone would think about it because the volume is so far in the background you probably couldn't hear any mistakes and I only took one take of this solo so here's a clip So now that you've taken a listen to my solo, here's what a bad jazz solo actually is. So B stands for brave. A bad jazz solo is brave. And what exactly does that mean? So it means that you don't really care about how you sound. And this is super important because the best jazz musicians in the world have learned to let go of their ego and simply just play from where they're at. They're not worried about impressing anyone. They're not worried about playing all the right notes. They're just allowing the music to come out of their instrument naturally. And this has to be practiced. So when you're taking your bad jazz solo, you wanna practice this ability to just let go and let the music come out. When you're actually practicing and trying to improve, that's the time to actually do the thinking. But when you're actually taking a solo, you really should let go of that altogether. Now, the second element of a brave jazz solo is one that takes risks. It's important that you're not doing the same things over and over and over again and expecting different results, falling back to the same patterns, falling back to the same licks, and trying to do the same things you've always been doing. You have to take risks on your instrument, play in different parts of it than you normally would, different registers, reach for notes, reach for things that you've actually 
been working on while you are improvising. And again, this comes back to just not being afraid of sounding bad. And so even though bad is an acronym, sometimes when you take a bad jazz solo, you may indeed actually sound bad, but it can be a really freeing experience and a weight off your shoulders to just realize that that's totally okay, especially for the sake of this exercise. The next one in a bad jazz solo is A. A means audited. So what does audited mean? It means that after you've recorded your bad jazz solo, you are actually going to listen back to it and analyze it. Analyze what went really well and analyze what you perceive to have not gone very well. This particular process so many people fail to do and therefore never improve. They stay on a plateau forever and years go by without them making any meaningful progress, so please do pay attention. When doing a jazz audit, you're listening back to your recording and you're writing down the answer to two questions. And the first question is, what did I love about this jazz solo? Now, please notice that this is an emotional question. You're really looking for the parts that made you feel good when you were playing. And when you write these down, you want to get very specific, even down if you want to the timestamp on the recording you are listening back to. Because once you identify the things that you actually love about your jazz solo, about your playing already, it's now time to double down on those things. Because the things that you are already good at are are like aging fine wine. You may be at the beginning of the process, it's in the barrel, but now it just needs time and pressure to improve over time. And so if we're consciously aware of what those things are, we can double down on those, go all in, and start improving on those things. The things that you're already good at and that are naturally coming out of you are of course more naturally to come out in your jazz solos later, so it's important that you pay very close attention to what these things are. So for example, up here on the screen are a list of things that I really liked about my jazz solo that I had just taken. I really liked the risks I took, I really liked the way I play eighth notes, and many other things that I got really detailed about, and now I can be conscious of what these are to double down on. The second question to answer is, what did I not like about my jazz solo? And once again, notice that this is an emotional question. You're looking for the parts that make you feel bad while you're listening to it. And no, that's not to say that I am promoting you feel bad about your playing. I don't think that's a healthy response in general. But when you you do feel bad, you must figure out exactly what those are down to the very detail. So for example, here's a list of things that I did not like about this particular jazz solo. For example, I felt like I was playing way too many eighth notes, there wasn't enough space. And simply being aware of that will help me play a better bad jazz solo next time. Next is D, which stands for directional. A bad jazz solo is directional. Now this means that there's actually something you're implementing in your solo. It has direction. You're not just not acting on what you've learned. So what does this mean? This means that you implemented a strategy that you learned from your audit. So for example, you may have learned that you don't play enough longer flowing eighth note lines. Everything's too chopped up and broken up. So then you go to the practice room where you actually think and you implement a strategy, such as exaggerating the process, like playing continuous eighth note lines over top of the form of a jazz standard to help you further implement playing more eighth notes in your jazz solos. Or you'll go to a recording and you'll learn some longer eighth note lines from jazz musicians you admire to see how they're actually going about doing it. So when you're taking a bad jazz solo, you will be implementing something that you have learned. Now, after you've gone through the entire bad jazz solo process, you're going to learn another jazz standard. And then of course, you're going to repeat this again. You're gonna take another bad jazz solo and make an adjustment. In other words, we're always constantly making small pivot points. We're learning something new, making a pivot in a new direction, and then a new direction, and then a new direction until we finally hit our target at the end. And perhaps you listen to all this and you're wondering, well, I'm new to improvisation and I'm not really quite sure how to even start taking a solo at all. Well, on the screen right now, I have a video called Jazz Improv Explained. It'll go over the very basics of improvisation and give you a good starting point. So feel free to click that video on the screen right now. By the way, in our Inner Circle membership, we learn a new jazz standard every single month and apply strategies like bad jazz solos to them. So I'll leave a link to that in the description down below or up here on the screen. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, like this video if you found it helpful, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.